Allah SWT says in the Quran in Surah Kahf وَمَا نُرْسِلُ الْمُرْسَلِينَ إِلَّا مُبَشِّرِينَ وَمُنْذِرِينَ وَيُجَادِلُ الَّذِينَ كَفَرُوا بِالْبَاطِلِ لِيُدْحِضُوا بِهِ الْحَقِّ وَاتَّخَذُوا آيَاتِ وَمَا أُنْذِرُوا هُزُوَا The gist of it, I'm going to just comment on a part of the ayah is the people who have disbelieved, Allah says وَيُجَادِلُ الَّذِينَ كَفَرُوا بِالْبَاطِلِ They use al-batil, things that are null and void, they have no value whatsoever perverted arguments to لِيُدْحِضُوا بِهِ الْحَقِّ to show that the truth is weak this is something that's a, this is a historical phenomena that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala describes in Surah Kahf He describes this phenomena as well in Surah Ghafir in which He says وَهَمَّتْ كُلُّ أُمَّةٍ بِرَسُولِهِمْ لِيَأْخُذُوهُ Every nation tried to plot and plan uh, against their messenger وَجَادَلُوا بِالْبَاطِلِ and they used false arguments false ways of arguing arguments that had no basis in the truth perversions of the truth لِيُدْحِضُوا بِهِ الْحَقِّ Why would they do that? To show that the truth is weak. To show that the people of the truth are ignorant or stupid. To show or to weaken the support for those who want to follow the truth. This is a historical phenomenon, brothers and sisters. And we are living in a time right now where this is ramping up. This is being ramped up at this time, the time that we live in right now. يُجَادِلُ الَّذِينَ كَفَرُوا بِالْبَاطِلِ People who are arguing to show that this faith is completely false. They use perverted arguments like Islam subjugates women, treats it like livestock, that the Sharia is the biggest, exist, the biggest threat to freedom. These are things that I'm telling you that elected officials have said in the United States. Not just some Joe Schmo on the street, elected officials, people who receive votes, who make laws in the United States have said these statements. So, يُجَادِلُوا الَّذِينَ كَفَرُوا بِالْبَاطِلِ This is something that is done to, in, to create this uh, environment of fear so that the people who are following the truth stop following it. Or their desire or their strength by which they follow the truth reduces. And this is something that we find being ramped up right now. I'll give you examples. You must have seen that there's actually think tanks who do this, funded by people, private donors. You can go read a report called Fear Inc. Fear Incorporated. It's a report that outlines these think tanks and the donors that feed this think tank. That basically uh, it's driving this industry. There are, when you, the recent tragedy happened in France, the people who came on the news, the analysts that came on media, the way they portrayed Islam, the way they portrayed this action of people who don't represent us. You must have heard of the no-go zones, the ridiculous fabrication of the media. All of this is done for a reason. It's done so that we who are taking this faith seriously start to distance ourselves from our faith a little bit. Start to doubt the tenets of that faith. If it's said enough times, we'll start to believe in it. If it's said enough times that the Sharia subjugates women, we might start to believe that actually does. And what it does even worse, it leads others who are not Muslims to, into violent Islamophobia, which is what I want to talk about today. The consequence of this fear-mongering, this bigotry, this time that we're living in, in times of bigotry, is not only do the Muslims feel that they need to detach themselves from Islam a little bit, put a separation between themselves and this faith, but also there are people who listen to this on the news and they see us as the enemy. They see Islam as the enemy. They see us as everything that's wrong with the world. And that causes them to do acts that are absolutely deplorable. You must have heard of what happened on Wednesday. The, the brother, uh, Brother Dia, his wife, uh, and her, her sister, all three of them murdered in cold blood 
cold blood, execution style murder. It was no parking dispute, or maybe it was a part of the problem. But you don't go and shoot somebody in the head when you have a parking dispute. Murdered in cold blood, just a little closer to home, Fort Mac. There's a brother who, who moved from Ottawa, a Muslim brother who moved from Ottawa to Fort Mac, was recently shot in his home. The arson attacks that took place in France after the Charlie Hebdo attacks, the amount of attacks that took place on mosques, on people, the demonstrations that took place on the Texas, uh, or on the, on, on the Texas Capitol Day, demonstrations that took place against Islam. My friends were there, they told me about it. The kind of things that were said to them was unbelievable. This violent Islamophobia, brothers and sisters, we're living in a time of violent Islamophobia. In our own government here, in our own locally here, the government is trying to pass these bills, trying to show that they're strong arming or they're trying to show strength against the terrorists, but they're not. This is all part of this industry that seeks to instill fear and mistrust in the community. And we are living in these times. We can't deny that anymore. In 2005, 2006, when I was in university, when I was in high school, it wasn't like that. It was, even after 9-11, it wasn't like that. Now it's different. There's so much more mistrust planted. There's an industry that plants mistrust and fear and anxiety in the people. So that they see us and our faith as the enemy. And this is historical as well. Before, if you study recent history, uh, there's always been one other that the West is united against. It was communism not long ago. Before that, it was the First Nations people. It wasn't, the, there's always been an other that's been sought or to, that's been sought to be portrayed as the enemy so that everybody can unite against them. But it's us now. It's us now. So the thing that I want to, and I don't, I'm not saying this, to, I'm not bringing this alarmist rhetoric here to scare you, but this is reality and we need to see it with our eyes. And we need to need to read the reports that explain this reality. And then we need to also discuss how do we tackle this situation? How do we live in this environment, in the society? It's being productive members of the society while combating that fear mongering rhetoric that is put on the media, the image that is put up off us. How do we live productively while countering that? And I want to use our slain brothers, our slain brother and the two sisters as an example of that. Our slain bro brother there, who was slain in Chapel Hill, shot in his house and his wife and her sister. I want to use them, these young men, 23, 21, 19 years old, in dental school, both of the husband and wife were in dental school. The younger sister, she was studying in university, studying architecture. These were high achieving people. And then they spent a lot of their time contributing to the community. They were just before the brother was executed. He was doing uh, a free workshop or free, uh, giving out free supplies to the homeless in North Carolina and gathering money for dental supplies for the refugees in Turkey, the Syrian refugees in Turkey. These two things, community support, working for the community here and community abroad, while educating ourselves, while being rising above this narrative. These two are the cornerstones of how we need to act. I want to demonstrate this also from an ayah of the Quran, in which Allah says, What the kathiru min ahl al-kitab, law yaruddunakum min ba'di imanikum kuffaran, this is, a, this is in Surah Baqarah. Surah Baqarah is a Medinan era surah. When the Prophet ﷺ had already left Mecca and established a base in Medina. He had political power, he had influence. When this ayah was revealed. He had an army too when this ayah was revealed. But when the ayah is revealed, check out what the ayah says. It says, What the kathirun min ahl al-kitab? Many of the people of the book, they really love لَوْ يَرُدُّونَكُمْ If only they could turn you away from your religion. 
if only they can cause you to detach yourself from your religion. A lot of them just want that to happen. Why is that? Hasadan min indi and fusihim. Out of this, this envy, min indi and fusihim, from within themselves. This is a very powerful phrase here. Min indi and fusik, or min indi and fusihim, or min indi nafsik, means something that is deeply inside of you. You feel very strongly about it. So Allah says, this. The people of the book, they want nothing more than you, the Sahaba, to detach yourselves from your religion. So much so that you've actually left the religion or you've gone far away from the religion. And why is it that they want that? Historically speaking at that point, why is it that they wanted it? Hasadan min indi anfusihim. It was a deep-rooted envy and hatred they had. Min indi anfusihim. Deep-rooted from inside of them which is what bigotry is, which is the definition of bigotry. Deep-rooted hatred for no reason. Extreme hatred, extreme mistress, without any probable cause. These were people, the Prophet ﷺ and the Sahaba encountered these bigots as well, who, because they didn't have the political power and the clout to influence them, all they wanted though in their hearts was that the Sahaba and the Prophet ﷺ distanced themselves from the faith that they held so dear. And for no other reason except for this deeply rooted bigotry that they had in their hearts. So what does Allah say to the Prophet ﷺ now? Remember, he has a state, he has an army, he has power, والسلام, when the ayah is revealed. What does Allah tell him? He says, Fa'fu, wasfahu. حَتَّى يَأْتِيَ اللَّهُ بِأَمْرِهِ إِنَّ اللَّهَ عَلَىٰ كُلِّ شَيْءٍ قَدِيرٍ وَقِيمُ الصَّلَاةِ وَآتُ الزَّكَىٰ Four things. Both of them, it's pairs actually. Four things that are revealed in pairs. The first two are a pair, and the second two are a pair. فَعَفُوا وَصْفَحُوا Forgive. وَصْفَحُوا Ignore. Forgive and ignore. Forgiveness is, uh, you don't take this, that hatred, that bigotry, and you, do, you just, you don't hold it against the person. The scholar says, Ashawkani says, Al-Afu al, al is that you let go of Al-Mu'akhada ala dham. You don't, there's no Mu'akhada ala dham. That, that action, the consequences of it are ignored. So, Fa'fu, the, these people who have intense hatred for you, for no reason except that it's deep, deeply rooted inside of them. What should you, what should you do? Fa'fu. Ignore it. Don't hold them accountable to it. Remember the Prophet ﷺ had the power to do so. But still Allah tells him, Fa'fu. Forgive. Don't hold that accountable. Just let it be. Wasfahu. And then ignore them. Turn the other page. Safaha literally means to flip the page. Completely just ignore their actions. Fa'fu wasfahu. Now look at this beautiful thing. Afu is healing for us. The one who is being hated upon, which is us right now, which was a Sahaba back when the ayah was being revealed. The thing that hurts the most is why are people hating us? Why are people uh, looking at us the way that they are looking at us? I need to do something to fix that. But Afu, Forgiveness is the balm that heals that wound. And waswahu, ignoring, not giving a reaction, turning the other page, is the balm that heals the person who is hating you. It's a beautiful thing. It's a, it's a beautiful command from Allah. Fa'afu waswahu. The afu is for you, so your heart can feel, feel at ease. And waswahu, the saf, the ignoring is for them, so they stop hating you. And establish salah. Iqamatu salah is, Iqamatu shay'in is to make something stand up firmly, to plant something in the ground. Aqimu salah is a description of how a person prays. They're not shaking in their prayer. They're not going from right to left. This is a person who is fixed in their salah. There's a connection between that person and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. There's a connection. 
Aqimu salah also means that you establish salah as the pillars for your life. Everything in your life revolves around your salah. Salah is the only immovable part of your day. Everything else is movable. Aqimu salah. Wa'atu zakah. And give zakat. And give charity. And continue to help our people. Four things that Allah tells the Prophet ﷺ, despite the fact that he had the power to extract some revenge or show, or at least put on a show of force. Now bring it back to us here. As people are hating us because of this fear-mongering industry that drives it, as people will start to hate us, they will say things to us. The sisters who are wearing hijab, they will, fear, they will face it or they will feel it more than anybody else. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect all of our sisters who do this and who go out every single day wearing their iman on their sleeves, literally. May Allah protect them and keep them safe. But when this does happen to us, when people will say these things or will look at us in a certain way, we have to keep these four tenets in mind. Fa'fu, ignore, just forgive the person. Forgive the person. That's the best that we can do. That's gonna heal our hearts. Waswahu. And don't give a reaction. If a person is saying something rude, we don't have to turn around and say something back that's rude. We don't. The Prophet ﷺ, when the Jew came to the Prophet ﷺ and he was said, he said, Assamu alayka ya Muhammad. Sounds like Assalamu alayka, but it says Assamu alayka, which means death. And Aisha radiallahu anha got upset and she started to uh, basically uh, say bad things to that Jew. And the Prophet ﷺ said, Ya Aisha, in Allah la yuhibbu al-fuhsh, la yuhibbu al-fahisha wa la tafahush. Allah does not like rudeness and crudeness. And he said, didn't you hear what I said? I said, wa alayk, and may death upon be you too. I'm, I'm gonna die and you will die as well. So if somebody says something rude to us, wasfahu, ignore it. No need to respond back to it right away. Fa'fu, wasfahu. This is going to help us deal with the people. And then dealing with our own problems. Waqimu salah, establishing salah. That's what benefit, benefits us. Al hath ala ma This is what Shawkani says about this ayah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala makes them realize this is what you need to focus on so you can get benefit. You can get closer to Allah. Waqimu salah, wa'atu zakah. And charity. Giving zakat, giving charity, helping out the poor. These four tenets are the basic ways of how we deal with bigotry or people who are bigots. In conclusion, we were we are in an, an environment where there's an industry that's feeding fear to people, and because of that, there's going to be reactions against us. They might be violent like the ones that we saw at Chapel Hill. Or they might be non-violent, but just as hurtful. And we'll see that and we'll feel that. Wallahi, when I wear a thobe in a grocery store, I feel these eyes now that I never felt before. I never felt that before. I would always wear a thobe here and there, no problems. But now I feel, I feel these eyes looking at me that I didn't feel before. That's something that's reality now. We have to accept that. And how do we deal with it? The four core tenets. You forgive. You ignore. Be, we have to be on the best manners that, that we possibly can be. Just like the brother and his wife and her sister were on their best manners. And we have to establish salah. And we have to do charity and good in the community. We have to make a contribution in the community. Just like those three that were slain. If you watch the media reports, all that we have, all that we see of them are the good words that they did. May Allah accept it from them and accept them as martyrs. But we see on the media all the good that they did. And that's held up to show that they were good because of their Islam. That's what we need to do. وَقِيمُ الصَّلَىٰ وَآتُ الزَّكَىٰ And last thing is the fear should not drive us ever to distance ourselves from our faith. Just because it's becoming more difficult to be a practicing Muslim does not mean we stop practicing Islam. The fear and the mistrust should not let us, should not dictate anything. It should make us stronger. 
If anything, it should make us stronger and more resilient in holding on to our faith. I ask Allah Taala to give us uh, istiqamah and firmness and steadfastness in the face of a difficult time that's coming. And we ask Allah Taala to accept our brother and his sis and his wife and her sister as martyrs. I ask Allah Taala to accept the brother who was slain in Fort Mac as a martyr and to give patience to the family. I ask Allah Subhanahu wa Taala to keep all of us safe, our children, our sisters, our moms, all of us safe. And then I ask Allah Subhanahu wa Taala to help us convey the message through our actions, through our afu, through our saf, through our salah, through our charity. In the Allah wa Malaikatu wa Sallu na Nabiya wa Ladina wa Sallu alaihi wa Sallu nasiim. Allah wa Sallu ala Muhammad wa ala ali Muhammad kama Sallu ala Ibrahim. Inna khamidu majid darbanatina fi dunya hasana wa fi al-akhirati hasana wa khinadabanar wa qimu salah.